I know y'all see this luscious. If you wanna know how I made this cute little unit, keep on watching. What's going on tribe, it's Quinita Charnel. This is another wig slay. Here's my wig cap, which is the same one I used from before. We are using Freetress. This is the fluffy wand curl, and this is the ringlet wand curl, both in number two, two packs of each. This is also the same wig cap that I used from before, details below. And let's just get into it. I'm showing you this hair straight out of the package. This is the ringlet curl, which is what I used first. Very fluffy, very pretty. And this is actually the fluffy wand curl. As you can see, it's obviously fluffy. So the key to, to this wig is splitting the hair. Now, like I said, I started with the Freetress wing, ringlet wand curl first, and I just did this straight across the bottom just to give myself a little line. So that way, if I decide to put a headband on with this wig, I can do that. Now there's nothing special about how I'm doing this. This is the same usual crochet pattern that I use. I go along the bottom as you can see and I left this, I sped it up a little bit, but I left it so that you guys can actually see what I am doing because some people struggle with that. So I wanted to make sure that I put that in perspective for you. We are now starting our second row and I'm going in with the fluffy wand curl. Now there are two things that I wanna tell you about this hair. Number one, it does get frizzy, but that is okay. That gives us our bounce, that gives us our movement, that gives us our flow when we wear our wig. But if it gets too puffy for you and you start to panic, kind of run your hands down the strand like I did there and that maintains all the frizz. So there's no need to worry about that. Secondly, ladies, Make sure you are using the brick layering method when you make your crochet wigs. This saves me every single time because what I am doing is preventing any kind of gaps from being in anywhere on my wig. I hate when I'm out and I see girls with beautiful crochet installs or so I think and then I see the back of their head or the side of their head or the top of their head and there's huge gaps like sis. I know you see them holes. I know you feel that gap. I know you feel that breeze. Young jock voice like I know you see it. Cause if I see it and you see it, y'all know what I mean. Like, come on, we must do better. So this is why I'm telling you to make sure you utilize that brick layering method, even on your wigs, but also give yourself adequate spacing. If you don't like your wig super full like I do, use a finger's length in between each row or two fingers length, but be careful with the gaps. We do not want to be out here looking gappy, okay? All right, y'all. Now, if you want to get the exact look that I'm going for, make sure you do what I did, which is alternate the textures. On the bottom, like I said in the beginning, is the ringlet wand curl. And on the top here in my second row is the fluffy wand curl. This is what kind of gives that flow, that, that bounce, that movement that I know you guys love. But it also helps the hair to blend. So this is one thing that I wasn't quite fond of with the ringlet wand curl because it was a little bit shorter than the fluffy wand curl. So keep that in mind as well. But like I said, if you do it the way I did it, you won't even be able to tell. And the holes are bigger on this side or on the right and left side of the cap, which is fine. It'll be easier for you to do, but you should end up with something like this once you start filling it in, which is what I'm showing you here. Once you keep going, you will end up right here where I am. This is me showing you what the wig looks like in this current state with one pack of each hair split. So if I didn't say it before, again, I'm gonna say it now to you. The ringlet wand curl, I only split one time. So I took a piece and I split it in half. Now the fluffy wand curl, I split that into three, sometimes four pieces, depending on how big the original piece was. You can do this. Um, the same way or you can do it whatever way makes you comfortable But just keep on filling in the gap until you begin to get like a closure pieces Which is what I'm showing you here 
because we are going to make this wig look like it is growing from our scalp. Okay, y'all know my phrase, y'all know my saying, scalp realness. So keep watching and you'll see my technique on how to make this wig look like it's coming right from the root. Okay. All right, tribe, we are pretty much done. All we have left is this section right here, and this is how we're gonna close it up, the invisible part method. So what that is, is taking one strand, pulling it through the loop instead of both strands. This gives you that natural scalp, like it's growing straight from your head. Take your time, use small pieces, and even if those little pieces on the net breaks, that's okay, just keep filling it in the best way you can. And if you do it correctly, it should look just like this. Yas, do y'all see this scalp realness? This scalp realness. This is going to look so bomb if you decide to wear this wig as a part, middle part, side part, whatever. And if you choose not to, you can always flip it to the right and cover it up or flip it to the left. But this is the final look. Yes, I was feeling myself and I think I did a heck of a job, but I hope this video helped you. If you have any questions, be sure to drop them below. And if you're not making wigs for yourself by now, Make them for somebody else and get that bag. But I'll see y'all next time. Bye.